Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Before we get into things today, make sure you hit that like button. It really does help me out and it's greatly appreciated. Now then, if I haven't made it obvious enough already, we're going to be working on the BMW 760 Ally today. And what are we going to be doing? So essentially, we're going to be giving this car a good thorough deep clean. As you can see, the car is up in the air on axle stands. The wheels are, of course, removed. They are actually going away to be refurbished so they're going to look sweet once they're on also have some new rubber to go on all round as well but yeah this car has not been cleaned in a good couple thousand miles did take it on a bit of a trip to scotland and as you can see a lot of dead bugs flies whatever else on the front of this thing And I think the interior has not had a good clean in, well, so long. So yeah, it's really quite filthy in here. When I bought this car, I did like take the entire interior out, took all the seats out and everything and gave everything a good proper deep clean. But yeah, it hasn't had a whole lot since then, if I'm being honest. So not only do we want to give this thing a good deep clean both inside and out and obviously in the wheel arches as well. We also have a couple of things to install today. So this grill, bonnet, vent, whatever you want to call it, you may be thinking, well, that just looks like a standard piece, right? And yes, it is. It's the exact same as what is on the car, but difference is the one on the car has slight bit of damage it has a couple of chips out of it so I thought I do have a spare from the old bonnet so I may as well swap that out because yeah this one is in much better condition and you can probably see some number plates so yeah we have a fresh set of gel plates which uh, should make the car look a lot better the original ones are yeah they're looking a bit sorry for themselves I did actually uh, stick these back on from uh, when I'd done the LCR conversion. Obviously, I've drove it around for a good few months since then. So we are going to have to peel these off, get all the uh, the glue residue removed, and uh, then stick the new ones on. But I'll do that. I'll stick the new plates on after I've given the car a good thorough clean. But that is the front original plate. Of course, the rear one as well. Oh, also something else I want to do today is actually remove the 730D badge. As good as it is, you know, down badging, you know, driving around in a six litre V12 with a three litre diesel badge on the car, it's just not the right fit. I do actually have all new badges, but I'm going to be probably installing those right at the end of the project after the paintwork has been polished and all the rest of it. I have new v12 badges for the front wings as well so that'll all probably go on right at the very end but today i do want to get this removed because it's going to look a bit better you know with this uh old badge out of the way okay then let's make a start okay so i guess before we start cleaning the car we should start with removing what we need to remove which is the rear badge rear and front number plate and that grill on the bonnet just have some tar and glue remover here. Should hopefully loosen these up slightly. You can really use what you want to remove one of these badges. I just have an Nando's card. You can obviously use any card of your choice. You can also use fishing wire, whatever you want to use, but Essentially, you don't want to make contact with the paint, so you need to be very careful. That's the last one removed. Okay, so that is the badge now removed. Now the remnants of what is left behind, I'll get all that removed once the... Uh, once we get onto the cleaning stage, I guess the rear number plate, we can just pull this off. Of course, easier said than done. I did 
use about five sticky pads to put this on. Yeah, this is stuck on well. Okay, let's go do the same to the front. There we are. Now, when it comes to removing this grill, you could just try and pull it up. But chances are, if you do that, you'll end up snapping these clips. So what I'm gonna do is try and push these clips in from underneath the bonnet, and then it should just essentially fall out then. Well, the grill did definitely fall out, but I didn't anticipate it to go quite like that. Now, I'm not gonna go ahead straight away and install the new grill, because as you can see, it's quite a lot of dirt in here, and it's a perfect opportunity now to clean all of that out. And if you're wondering, oh, won't the water go into the engine bay? Yes, it will, but the engine bay needs a good clean anyway. So yeah, I thought I may as well do this lot while I'm at it. So yes, now it's time to start cleaning. First things first, Give the entire car a good rinse. Next step then should be a snow foam, but because we still have like half of Scotland's wildlife still attached to my front bumper, I'm just gonna go pretty ham with this bug tar and glue remover. And now I'll give the car a good going over with the snow foam. Hmm. Might help if we turn it on. Now it's just going to be a case of leaving this to sit for 10 to 15 minutes or so. And now it's time to rinse it all off.
And now that the car has been fully rinsed off with the pre-wash, now time to do the contact wash. Nothing special, you guys have seen it a million times before. Just using the two bucket method. So clean, cold water to rinse off the mitt. And of course some warm shampoo water to clean the car with. So the idea is that we start at the top of the car, on the roof of course, and we work our way down. Let's crack on and get this done. And once the entire exterior has been done, I'll have to open up all of the doors and do the door shuts. Bottoms of the doors as well. All right, they like to collect a lot of dirt. As you can see, got to make sure you get this gap between the tail lights and the uh, tailgate seal. Got a lot of leaves built up there. Now that that is all done, you can just rinse it all off. And now with the entire car rinsed off, or oh, you probably also noticed that I got rid of the remnants of the old badge. You can still see it. You can still sort of see an outline, but this will need polishing out. I'll do that at a later date, but I got the remnants of the old uh, number plate adhesive sticky pads off. But yeah, let's just get the car dry now. Okay, so that is the car now dry, looking much better. I know for sure this car would definitely benefit from a good polish in some areas. There are very, very light scratches. You're definitely not gonna be able to see them on camera, but you know, quite a lot of these will just polish out. And I'm still undecided what to do with this door. So pretty much like the only damage to the bodywork is on this door, well, at least the worst of the damage to the bodywork is on this door. So as you can see, we have a spot here where it has flaked off. It's kind of bubbled up around there. So this is just gonna keep flaking off. And then there is a dent here with a, with a slight scratch. It's been like this since I bought the car, by the way. But um, yeah, I think if you get the dent pulled out, you will probably still see the majority of that scratch. I think it has gone through the paint. I mean, you might be able to polish that, but um, yeah, you're still gonna have this dent. So I'm still undecided whether or not, whether or not to actually, you know, just buy another replacement door or to get like it re-sprayed, but obviously then you'd have to go over into the rear quarter, possibly the bumper and the front door as well. So it'd mean pretty much having the whole side re-sprayed. Let me know what you would do, you know, with this door. Would you just replace it or would you, um, you know, get it resprayed. Interesting to know your thoughts. Now what I'm going to do though is install this grill into place, which should be fairly easy. It should just drop in, just needs a good push. There we are. And is that firmly into place? Now let's get these new number plates on. 
and just like that, that is the front plate installed and that is the rear plate installed. How much better do they now look? If you do want to get yourself a set of these plates, there will be a link down in the description box below. I guess now it's time to move on to the interior. Like I said, it doesn't need a whole lot in here, just a good vacuum, any rubbish taken out, and then a quick wipe over. So let's get this done. Now you guys didn't need to see that, but the interior is now done. Nice and clean in here. Smells nice and fresh too. Lovely stuff. This interior comes up so, so well for an almost 20 year old car. That is us pretty much done. It's as far as I want to go today. Like I said, the car really could do with a good polish, but that'll be at a later stage. Looking nice and clean, nice and fresh. Definitely the right decision to do an LCI swap on this. The LCI front end looks so much better in my opinion. New plates as well. Rear end looks a lot cleaner as well. With that 730D badge gone. Let's have a quick look at the engine bay as well. Okay, not perfect in here, but definitely better than it was. Still have quite a lot of work still to do in here, so I'll attend to this when I get on to doing some of those jobs. But yeah, still very presentable. But that's just now done for the day. Okay then guys, so gonna wrap this one up then. The car is looking spot on both inside and out still a lot of work to do though um, coming up we have a lot of engine work still to do and uh, a lot of cosmetic stuff to do as well so in terms of the engine stuff i still have the spark plugs and ignition coils to do and if you're wondering why i haven't done this yet after having the parts for i don't know six six to eight months or so um, it's because it's a pretty big and involved job and while I'm in there I want to you know tackle a few different jobs as well so I'm just you know just been trying to find a good couple of days to tackle that so when I'm in there obviously spark plugs and ignition coils but you also need to swap out the intake manifold gasket so you have to remove the plenum to remove the uh, ignition coils and the spark plugs so I'll be tackling them at the same time I also want to tackle the crankcase ventilation breathers one on each side i've got new pipes and everything as well all genuine bmw um what else oh the intake valves i want to inspect the intake ports and the intake valves see if they're coked up if they are particularly bad then i am going to attempt to clean them also while i'm in there as well i want to measure up the diameter of the secondary air pump or secondary air injection pipes where it goes into the back of the cylinder head and I'm thinking of making up some blanking plates. I don't think there is any uh, kits or blanking plates for the N73 engine. I don't even know if there's any for the N62 engine which would uh, make things a little bit easier because I'm, I'm sure they'd be identical. Um, but removing and deleting the secondary air injection system. I don't know if anyone's even done it. It's definitely not a thing on YouTube, um, but it's a very, very common problem for not, only the, uh, for not only for the pump itself to fail, which is very expensive to replace, um, but also the both of the valves as well on you know both banks, they get completely clogged up and it's just, you know, continuous uh, maintenance thing. It's a little bit, um, it's a little bit like an EGR valve uh, in the way that the secondary air uh, injection system works. So basically it just pumps uh, hot air or fresh air, I should say, um, into, the, uh, into the cylinder head to help heat up the cats uh, a little bit quicker and to lower emissions on startup. So I get why they're there, but they are just troublesome, especially when the car's 20 years old or so and um, they create a lot of issues as well so yeah i'm going to try and remove that if i can um what else do we have 
left to do. Um, secondary water pump or, um, yeah, that's what it's called, secondary water pump. Have that to change out, that was thrown in error code. Um, what else? I think after that, that, that's mainly, that's the majority of the engine stuff taken care of. I think after that it's mainly cosmetic stuff. So I have a bunch of trim pieces. I plan on like respraying all of the interior trim pieces, you know, the trim pieces where it just like scratches off and looks kind of horrible. So I bought all the, um, bought all the materials to do that with. That's going to completely transform the interior, by the way. Um, what else? Yeah, just random piece of trim that's just damaged and, you know, I'd really just want the car to look as perfect as possible. So a lot of pieces I am having to buy direct from BMW because not only are the used uh, parts, you know, the used part, um, used parts market, not only is that not plentiful, um, you know, they are more than likely going to be damaged exactly the same as mine are. Um, so yeah, most of these parts I, ha I am having to buy direct from the dealer, um, which I have had to do on a, a number of things when it's come to this car, but it is what it is, it's a rare car, what can you expect? Um, but yeah, I can't really think of too many, oh, a couple of things here are in the corner of my eye. These little uh, door brake uh, bushes, it's a common problem for the door not to uh, stay open. Um, so I'm going to be swapping them out and I still don't know what I want to do about that door yet. Please let me know. Should I replace that door with the damage? Should I, like, like I said, just replace it for another used door or do I get like the whole side resprayed? I don't know yet. Um, but yeah, I, I guess I'll let you decide. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to wrap this thing up. I uh, don't want to ramble on any longer. Hopefully you all have enjoyed it. Please give it a like, leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you have not already done so and i'll see you all in the next one peace